Good morning and welcome to Journeys in Faith with Ann DeSantis. Thank you so much for joining us on this program. I am joined by Bear Wozniak. Bear, thank you so much for joining us on Journeys in Faith. Aloha, Ann. Good morning. I would like to introduce Bear as a Benedictine oblate. He's a husband, father, world champ, surfer, biker, adventurer, man of God, and, and also an EWTN personality. Thank you again so much for joining us. And we're going to speak about the book that you wrote recently. Mm -hmm. And the book is called 12 Rules for Manliness. There it is. There's the book. And we're grateful to have you on the show that we can talk about the book. So let's start out with that. I mean, how did you come up with the idea for the book? And I know we're going to go through kind of the table of contents and uh, just talk about it and how it can help men to live better lives of faith. Well, you know, my focus in my work is mostly outreach to men, although I would say over half our followers are women because they just really want men to get this message. Uh, I was riding with my driving with my wife uh, from we live in Waikiki and going up across Diamond Head and this song came on the radio and she, she said, you're going to love this song. And I forget her name now, but uh, this words were, um, you know, basically, um, where is my John Wayne? You know, where have all the cowboys gone? And the lament of the woman who still wants to have a, you know, a, a man that's a, that's a man. And so I wrote the book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Uh, but I, people, uh, like I was, I, I launched the book in Montana. I went to several colleges there. And uh, one of the colleges wanted to shut me down. They were trying to stop me from speaking just because I used the word manliness in my title. And uh, they let me speak. But they had a big statement ahead of time. We don't necessarily agree with anything he's saying. And there were professors in the back uh, uh, just waiting for me to say something really stupid. But the word man, uh, there's two words in Latin for the word man. One is ver, which is where we get the word virtue. So that's what a man is. He's virtuous. And then we get the word uh, homo sapien. Homo comes from the word humu, which means dirt or earth. And so uh, men are different than women. You know, we're made out of mud. And, uh, and so there's grit involved in being a real man. But, in being a re but there's so many things out there now about being, being a man. And it's all about machoism and getting rich and having sex with tons of women. And it's all about nothing. But they, they've got it all wrong. Gr grit is so that you can you can uh, live out the virtues. When in, in Corinthians, when it said Paul wrote, "Act like a man," no, he said, "Act like men." He used plural, implying you need brotherhood. Act like men, and then the next sentence says, "Do all things in love." So, uh, so we need men of grit, but we also need men of grace. We can't do it alone. It comes from a personal walk with Jesus, and then by the power of His Spirit. We can love others, seek the true good for others through self-donation. That's the essence of what a man is. Wow, you said that so well. And I think that the audience, I think all of us really, not just the audience, we all need to really know and understand that, right? You said mm -hmm. it's nothing to do with being a male chauvinist or being better than a woman. Uh, it's the idea of how God created men, isn't it? Yeah. How and he you know, created I, I, men. I met my wife in my wonderful, amazing wife in Florida. Uh, and we've only been married about seven years now. So uh, I was surfing a tandem surfing competition and she had seen tandem surfing. This is where you lift a woman in very extreme lifts, 45 different lifts. Uh, and she had become a fan of tandem surfing. She used to come down and watch me whenever the world tour would go to Florida. And uh, one day um, she had had a situation. She was a caregiver for her mother and for her who was dying and a, and a young girl who whose mother had died. So she didn't have much of a life. You know, we praise God for all the caregivers out there, situations like that. But um, she was, um, to make a long story short, she came to an event and I got, I taught her how to tandem, got another guy to tandem surf with her. And she got to go out and tandem. This is a dream she had held for eight years. And I had never met her. She was always right around me. I didn't know because she would come down for the events. But anyway, to make a long story short, this guy took her out surfing and I was trying to coach them. We were starting to film my TV show, Long Ride Home. So we were in Florida and he kept falling and hurting her. And finally, I said to him, you know, you can't surf with her anymore because your number one job is to inspire her trust and to protect her and to lift her. And so you're not allowed to surf with her anymore. Well, sure enough, the next day I see him paddling out with her again. 
and she's so valiant and she's so for him never con complaining just cheerful and we can do this but uh i saw her him drop her on the board and him fall on top of her and she got out of the off the board and i could see her tearing up her back was to him she didn't want to see him do that and i just signaled for her to come over to me and she and i had my board and we paddled out and we did three spectacular lifts because she's so great and we never never saw and he left the beach but that that's the essence of a, what a man is a man who can inspire trust a woman shouldn't trust a man but a man should inspire that trust in her and 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 earn that trust but also a man who will protect the woman her dignity even the woman he hasn't met yet that someday he will marry protect her by avoiding pornography and speaking badly of women and all these different kind of relate the hookup culture and then also to lift her men don't lift women anymore to lift her up be a support in her life so um yeah so that's that's uh that's what I know when we, when Cindy and I, when we're going to go be speaking at this Tampa Bay Men's Conference. And uh, when we get there, it'll, it's a men's conference, but when we speak to, a, speak to a mixed group, before we can get out of the car or into the conference, the women surround us. And they just say, tell the men we want them to be men. We need men, real men. Right. Oh, so well said. Uh, and I'm excited for you to visit Tampa, as we said before we started this podcasts is that we my husband and i were there in that area a couple weeks ago and it's it's a beautiful area you're in hawaii i started the podcast by saying good morning we're taping in the morning i should make uh, a clarification that this podcast airs at night so good evening too good evening but whenever you know you're watching I a, it i have a friend that says good morning all day long and people go it's not morning <laughs> he says his, his mercies are new every morning that's right so that's right morning, and it doesn't matter good you know you're in hawaii I'm in Pennsylvania. You know, there's people watching at all different times. So good evening, good afternoon, whenever you're watching. Yeah. Um, I love the table of contents of the book, and I'm just going to read a few, and maybe you can kind of unpack. But some of these chapters are, are a man's got to have a creed to live by your code. The second one is to ride for the brand. You have a man of your word. Be dangerous. Make a stand. I mean, tell us about some of those chapters. But, you know, um, First of all, I'm so delighted because I'm a big Louis L'Amour. He's a West, the greatest. Well, he's a great Western novelist. I got he passed away maybe 20 years ago, and I got to ask his wife if I could use some of his quotes. A lot of the old Western movies were based on his books, and uh, his men were always virtuous, and the women were always strong. He's one of the first authors to present women like that. But uh, uh, the in, in one of his quotes in the book is is something John Wayne said. You know, it's Louis L'Amour's words. A man's got to have a creed, a code he can live by. A creed and a code are two different things. A creed is just a, like a, a one sentence statement about this is my personal telos. This is the way God made me. Like I know my job according to the, my, the old catechism I learned was to know, love, and serve God in this world, you know, to make him known. But um, I have a personal telos. It's a certain way God wired me. I come factory loaded to fulfill a mission. And uh, and so my personal creed is that the most radical quest a man can pursue is to abandon himself to the wild adventure of God's will. That that's kind of goes with the, the kind of nature God gave me. But then there's that code that you live out. I'm a Benedictine oblate. You're familiar with the rules of St. Benedict. So in this book, I outline about just about 12 rules. And there's more, but there's 12 rules. Uh, that I seek to live by. And it's good for a, a, a man, you know, men and women have been reading this book together. And I've had been interviewed by a lot of men and women, uh, you know, husband and wives uh, about the book, but you know, to, to, to really drill down, what is it that God, how, what is it God's calling me to? What is my nature to, to write a creed? And, the, and then the second part is what is my code? How am I gonna live that out? You know, and it's, it's really important to define that. You know, the cowboys were, were, uh, very quick to choose the right you know they, they made this they made their decisions it wasn't hard making their decisions in a difficult situation wasn't hard for them because they, they'd always say i live you know live by the code i have a lot of cowboy friends my wife was a cowgirl she was a barrel racer but to live by a code um so if, if you understand what you what you stand for then when the, when going when it gets tough the decisions are easy. It may be hard to live them out, but the decision-making process should be easy. Mm. 
there's so much more than even you know, it, it, this is like a starting point for people to learn. And I think mm -hmm. the best way that they can learn is to get the book. Right. And again, the book is called 12 rules for manliness and Hey, there it is. And I think that the best way now you correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe your website or Amazon, tell us where they can get the book. Well, Sophia, Where's the best place? Sophie Institute publishing most all bookstores, I think have it, um, uh, Catholic and, and like, you know, Barnes and Nobles and those, but my website's deepadventure.com. And <clears throat> if you go there to purchase the book, then I'll autograph it. And my wife would be delighted to send it to you. And uh, our website, by the way, if you go to our website, that's a really cool place for men, for men and women to go. <clears throat> women can sign up for the a one year deep virtue school, but we have a man cave. Uh, that's a non Facebook community. Like we just had our zoom, our, it's not a zoom, but we just had our, our group call. Uh, last week with the men about every two or three weeks we have a call with the men and then we have this three-year curriculum a lot of it's based on this book of uh, the school of manliness like the school of the prophets in the old testament and the the uh the hundred prophets in the cave with obadiah the men of the men of men that were hanging out with david in the cave of adullam you know they were like misfits you know they owed money or they're running from the law or maybe the mother-in-law or i don't know what but they all hung out in this cave together and they formed each other and god formed them and they became the mighty men of valor so we had this three-year school and we all go through that school together at the same time so wherever someone starts in the middle of the year then they start with us there and and so that's the man cave it's bare it's a deepadventure.com uh, it'll take you to the website and uh and a lot of fathers are doing it with their sons because hmm. this is a book that a father, oh, this would be like a father's wisdom to a son. But there's also a lot of men that weren't fathered by a real man or by a man at all. And uh, and so this is also a place where brothers, you know, dig in and really have deep conversations real about real stuff. It's I think spiritual, it's, but it's also gritty. These resources, like you said, the, the Facebook group, right, is a Facebook group that you have. It's a non-Facebook community. Oh, a non-Facebook group. Of, a lot of men don't want anything to do with Facebook. You know? Okay. So it's uh, is it like a Zoom meeting? Yeah, similar to Zoom, but it's, okay. it's embedded in our in our website. Awesome. And by the way, this book has been in the top five of men Christian men's books, so it's reaching a lot of Protestants, too, who we love awesome. so much. Awesome. Yeah. I'm thinking to myself, people that are watching, that this is great for Catholic men's prayer groups. I know my husband yeah. is a member of two men's prayer groups that he really? does. They're both um, ones in person, ones online. I mean, yeah. I think it's a good yeah. gift for your husband or your son. And like you said, it's kind of a family affair that fathers and sons can come together for this endeavor yeah. and growing in faith. And, and, a, and a single mom with a son. You know, and, and a, a father and son will read this. Um, and, you know, son, what did you do in school today? Oh, nothing. But when you read this, they, they lean in when you read these words. That really gets their attention, and it is designed as 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 uh, my, my the last book I wrote too is the same, where it can be. It's designed for men to read, and it's not designed for men to read and digest the book. It's 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 designed to get real traction, real conversation going. You know, because mm. that's where really I think learning happens and change happens when you can get together, talk about it, and really integrate it into your life. So yeah. I thank you There's so much. Now, we do have to take a short break. So we'll be back in just a few. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, this is Archbishop Perez with a special message recognizing the incredible work of the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. In 2015, its founders were inspired by the World Meeting of Families and the visit of Pope Francis to create a pastoral ministry in Philadelphia for the benefit of families facing relationship crisis. The foundation ministers to struggling families and individuals through a confidential prayer line, pastoral appointment with priests, retreats, and much more. I'm deeply grateful for the work of the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation. In a short time, it has already strengthened and sustained hundreds of families. For more information about this pastoral ministry, please visit the website on your screen and join me in praying for families throughout a local church. May God bless you abundantly.
Thank you so much again for joining us on Journeys in Faith this Friday evening. I said good morning at the beginning, but it, uh, it, it airs actually in the evening. But whatever time of day, like Bear said, he has a friend that says good morning all day long. So uh, it really doesn't matter because most people watch these shows when, they, when, they, when they're able to. The beauty of the show. Yeah, that's beautiful. right. That's right. Now, during the first half, we talked about the book, which is the the 12 rules for manliness. And we talked about the, the charism of the book. Some of the other chapters are bride your passion, let good things run wild. Don't be a drifter, seek God's purpose for you. Ride the, pro the proving trail, pursue your course of action. I mean, there's a lot more than that, but talk a little bit more about like, how did you develop these chapters and what can people learn? Mm. Well, I, I just, again, it's my own code. You know, my dad taught me to write down a, my creed and a code, my philosophy of life. And I usually do that every year at the beginning of the year. But um, it just it's just common sense. For example, uh, uh, let me give let me see one of the chapters that you mentioned. Well, one of the ones is a man needs to be dangerous. You know, um, this is stuff men have men talk about with each other. Um, but uh, a man needs to be able to be I, I one of the things I tell men is you need to be able to physically fight if you can't physically fight and danger comes to your family or people that you love are, are you ready for that so um i i um i and so this is the sort of thing you wouldn't normally do talk about on a christian tv show but it's the truth a man needs to be first of all willing to fight and it would be really great if he was physically fit enough to fight and it might be good enough if he was trained i'm personally hold many different degrees in different martial arts i have a second degree ninja black belt which is a combative art now, all my kids went at least halfway to black belt. Two of them, I got to test for their black belts. And I just think it's essential for a man, especially to be fit, because usually the fight lasts about a minute, and then one of them gets too tired. So, but but to also make a stand morally, to not not to be looking for a fight when when it comes to you. Uh, well, for example, um, I was in the, in the airplane the other day, and the man got upset. He goes, Jesus, he used Jesus Christ's name as a, as a cuss word. And I just turned around and looked at him and I said, the only name by which men can be saved. Gentle, not too provocative. Uh, but, um, you know, when, when, when you hear uh, people cussing, you know, especially using foul language around women, I'll, I'll just say, excuse me, but there's ladies present. Even if he's with his girlfriend and she's used to it and she probably isn't participating in it. Um, you know, and of course, the more radical things, the you know, pro-life and waiting until till, till marriage to be, to, to to have to make love and so make a moral stand the other thing is to make a spiritual stand if a man doesn't know how to fight spiritually if he doesn't know the power of prayer if he doesn't know the rosary if he doesn't take holy water and bless his home i mean you're naive if you don't realize that you're in the middle of a battle zone so that's just an example but some of what i said is kind of stuff you wouldn't talk about with women present usually you know it's like uh when we get into it what you know things like that, about actually physically uh, making a stand. Because if, if a man, if a, if a man, if, if something happens and someone attacks a man and he doesn't defend himself, he's putting his whole family in jeopardy because he's the, probably the main provider. And Jesus wasn't a pacifist, you know. He told his disciples when he was sending them out, if you don't have a sword, go get one. And when Jesus said, if someone hits you in the cheek, turn, give him, turn your cheek, you know, turn your cheek, give him, offer to him the other, well, that's kind of like a man saying to another man, someone taking a swing at him, hitting him, and he just turns his cheek and says, is that all you got? Bring it. You know. Also, that was a way of insulting a person was to just slap him on the cheek. So men need to, um, to, to wake up in this day and age that um, they need to have a plan of how to protect, literally how to protect their family. Hmm. That's just one one of the rules. Man's got to be dangerous. Sure. Jesus and was dangerous. You know, he didn't he didn't go to Starbucks and, and read poetry. He didn't go. He wasn't a nice guy. He didn't say, hey, uh, let my, here's my latest poem. You know, title of it is why can't we all just get along? You know, he went in with a whip to the temple. So I, I don't think we want to be jerks, but we have to be ready. That's all I'm saying. Sure. And I think what you just said also, because I think when people go to mass and they hear the gospel about turning the other cheek, I think you, what you said that there, it is like, there's like a misconception of what that means. Mm -hmm. So I do think it's good that you clarified that, that it's not like, 
by turning the other cheek, it doesn't mean, hey, I'm inviting you to beat me up or something. You know, mm -hmm. it's not that, right? It's that you're you're standing your ground in some ways, right? Because right. But yeah. I, like I, when I walk with my wife down the street, um, we, you know, it used to be the tradition the man would walk closest to the curb, but we switch sides like a dance as we're walking down a, a city street, so that she's on the safe side when someone who doesn't look necessarily safe comes our way. When we sit in a restaurant, she knows what table I want and what chair I want to sit in, so I can see what's happening around me. You know, Doug Berry. You know, Doug Berry. I love that guy. When we go have, when we go out to eat. It's so funny because we both go to the same chair to sit down. We want that alpha chair so we could. And it's not like we're, um, you know, you know, hyper focused on it. It's just natural. But with Doug, I could take any chair and he can take the opposite chair because we have each other's back. But the other thing is you talked about your husband being a part of of men's groups. If, if you're a man and you're not part of a, a, a dynamic men's group, maybe just four guys that get together for breakfast once a week. Or have or or have a have a barbecue and have cigars and whiskey uh, on on a Friday night every now and then, and you don't talk about politics and you don't talk about sports, you talk about the grit and the real stuff of life. I used to have a cabin up in Montana, and uh, well, I didn't have a cabin. I had bought raw land a mile from Canada. It was in Montana, a mile from Canada, a mile from Glacier Park, the North Fork of the Flathead River. And so when I first came on this land, there was no road, and I was hiking in. And I thought it was my land. And I look across this little open meadow, and there's a wolf there. And he looks very, and they're big, you know, wolves are big animals. He looked very angry, and he looked, but he looked kind of like ragged. And I would see him from time to time. I built my little road, I built my little hunter's cabin. But um, one day, a, a Missoula professor, University, University of Missoula, was walking by. I'd never seen anybody walk by my cabin before, it's so remote. And I said, he said, yeah, I'm a tracker. I track apex predators. And I asked him, what about this um, this wolf I, I see? Do you know about this wolf? He goes, yeah, I know about that wolf. He used to be an alpha male. And he got pushed out of the pack by a younger male. And now he's a lone wolf. And he's going to die young and he's going to die diseased. And so men who think they can they can be a lone wolf, they take pride and say, I don't, you know, a lone wolf. Uh, they need you need brothers and you need there's so so many churches have men's groups now but if they don't why don't you start it it, it takes you and two other men you get together for coffee for a while and then say why don't we have other men come like i have men here in my home uh randomly uh and we uh, have cigars and whiskey and i have uh friends that i i i'm i do a group text with you know every day and uh, and then of course we have the man cave at deepadventure.com so yeah, men need to be with other men and challenge each other and encourage each other and be a model for each other. Mm. I love that word challenge and encourage. There's two words because mm. to me, that's what it's all about. You know, this discussion today is on men and for women, there's a whole other thing, right? There's a whole other way of life and way of growing in faith and women also need sisterhood and that, and we can have a whole nother other podcast with, with a different topic, but it's great to know that, you know, there, these are important things for men and for husbands mm. and for young men, old men, middle-aged. Now, I just want to go to the last few chapters of your book just to bring them up before we head toward the end of the podcast and just touch on this. Some of the other chapters you have are come hell or high water, get the job done. Mm. You also say lean and mean, fitness to witness, build brotherhood, how to treat men, excuse me, how a man treat women defines him and the adventures of fatherhood. So speak a little bit about those things before we head toward the end, because I think they're great topics for us to ponder. And again, I want to encourage people to buy this book and go to your website and get, go the, get book. the book. Go yeah, get, this book. get it. Give it here to other men. Um, 12 rules for manliness, where have all the cowboys gone? One of the ones I like of that chapter is get the, come hell or high water, get the job mm. done. And that's another Louis L'Amour um, uh, thing that he put in John Wayne's mouth you know he was a book that they made into a film but there's a saying how you do anything i so i'm trained in martial arts you know i mean i i used to teach it i don't anymore but i i i had great people that i was around and i would trained with the first white ninja master stephen hayes and he would say that the way you get out of a chair your penmanship the way you walk everything should be done with grace should be done with smoothly, with determination. And there's a saying, how you do anything is how you do everything. 
how you how you do you leave things laying around the house? What's well, a it's an indication of a disordered person, someone whose whose life is not orderly and confused. And so how you treat um, uh, the person on the phone when you got that tech call and you're talking to somebody in India and you're so frustrated, you know, I, I'm nicer now because sometimes I think, oh, no, no, they're going to know my name and then I'm going to be a bad example for Jesus. But but I you, know, you get so frustrated. Well, how you treat that person, how you treat the waitress, how you do anything, big or small, is how you do everything. So let's live a life of excellence and get the job done. You know, Jesus said something. He said, even now, the Father and I, we work. Work has great dignity. Benedict wrote about this. Uh, how, how, you know, and, and so many people say, well, I want to get a job where I can really find fulfillment. Your fulfillment is how you do any job. You know, I, I, as a young man, I used to be a commercial banker. I'd fly all over the country and I'd, and I'd feel so like, did I ever accomplish anything? Was it anything productive? Did it do anything for humanity? And then I would see the migrant workers in the field. At the end of the day, they knew they had accomplished something. There's dignity in every kind of work. And so many people think I got to find the perfect job that I could find fulfillment in. Well, maybe you need to find a job that provides for your family and that is productive for other people so, so that you're... Um, you're making a real contribution and and you'll find uh, benedict said that only humans work you know only only humans have this ability to produce uh, i know he it's some animals like bees and ants but we go beyond that in the creativity and the way we do our work and so work is a blessing it, it became a pro it be, you know we do it with toil that was the scripture for this last weekend but um but nevertheless my mom gave me a, a beautiful um plaque when i started my first career position out of college and it was said it said do all your work is unto the lord and not as unto men for for from him comes your, comes your reward and so find dignity in how you're doing the dishes find dignity in how you're mowing the lawn find dignity in how you're changing diapers find dignity in how you're reconciling the bank account and how you're doing your sales call um, there's great dignity in work and, it, and it's a reflection of, of the imagio dei uh, to work to do it well get the job done mm. you said so much and i think it's uh, wetting the appetites of everyone and I like what you also just said about the way that we do things. I mean, I don't think that's just for men too. That's for everyone that the, the way that we do everything makes a difference for our faith, for our life, for everybody around us. Yeah. And I've been, I hear so many men as I travel around the country, they're trying to find people to come to work. It's so hard to get someone that will come to work on time. It's like they're doing me a favor. Mm. Um, that's bad for your soul, young men, young women. It's bad for your soul when you're not productive, when mm. you're not doing work. It's bad for your soul. It fractures, it softens, it makes it yucky inside. But when you work, and of course you have to have your life in balance. It's not all about work. Our greatest work is to worship God, right? But um, that in, in Hawaii, we have the saying kuleana. It's your personal place, what your personal calling is in life, your area of stewardship. But it's not good for your soul when you do lazy work. It, it hurts you. Yeah, 100%. Thank you for all of your wisdom. That's what it is. It's wisdom. And again, I mean, we keep repeating over and over, but please do find out more about the book. Buy the book. There you go. 12 Rules for Manliness by Bear Wozniak. So any final words before we end, Bear? I would, I would, we'd love people to come to uh, go to our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak uh, Spirit of Adventure YouTube channel. And, and subscribe. We've got all we've got all these cool little 60 second shorts now that we do. And they're really great for people to grab and share with their friends or with their family and uh, say things that maybe you would like to say, but you really can't. And then we have our, our long ride home TV series. It's four seasons motorcycle TV series is on prime video. It's airing on EWTN and we, and we, and we just put it up last week so that it's free on YouTube. Hmm. Thank you so much. It's always an honor to have you on. I think you came on the show before. And of course, yeah. you've been on the Sewing Hope podcast with Bill Snyder and I. Our good friend. Very well Bill acquainted Snyder. with Bill Snyder of Isn't Patrick he a Park hero? Ministry. Isn't he a hero? Isn't he a hero? And he I'll is. tell you what, he works with, with me on my show. And he is the guy who gets the job done, like we were saying. He's a faithful, faithful man. Love him. He is. And I, I've been working with him now with our podcast for. Believe it or not, we started right around the pandemic and we're still going strong with over 250 podcasts, I think. So 
Aren't we um, lucky to a get shout to do out to like Bill this? Snyder and thank you for introducing Bear and I to to yeah. do this podcast together. So again, Bear, thank you for joining me on Journeys in Faith. Okay, aloha. God bless everyone, and we will see you all next time. We are the first and third Friday of every month here on the Ann DeSantis YouTube channel. See you then. God bless. Hi, Bear.